Hey guys, so this is the uh, Wildcat leather sheath. It's about 20 years old after I treated it with uh, Obanaz oil, leather oil, and then um, waited three weeks or so for that to soak in, and then I hit it with uh, Obanaz uh, leather protectant, and it's been three or four days, um, and most of it's soaked in, and uh, so I'm going to go back to the beginning, and so you can see the before and after. All right, how we got from here, how we got to here, it, sunlight's at a certain angle, I guess, you want to catch the colors, but uh, how we got to here, from where it is to start. <clears throat> Good morning, got my coffee and uh, this, uh, some Obanaz leather oil, and uh, this old, about 20 year old sheet, this Wildcat knife. I'm gonna try and fix up the leather, restore it a little for the oil. Pretty cool knife, right? Uh, but here's the, you can see over the last 20 years, it's cracking, pretty much all kinds of stuff wrong with this. It's just worn over time. And so I'm gonna try some Obanoff's oil on it and see how much it helps. I don't think we're going to get the black color, but if we can save the oil, save the leather, make it last a little bit longer. Uh, probably cost a pretty penny to make up a sheath like this nowadays. Um, so, we're going to see how that goes. Alright, got my morning coffee. And we're going to shake up this leather oil. And here we go. Lots of extra oil, so I put this box out here. Paper towel. Soak all that up. Some applicator comes with it. Using the box is kind of a work table, so I don't get the oil on my uh, wood. Just want it on my leather. And I don't think it's going to turn it black, but uh, I'm going to try and extend the life of this sheath here. This applicator leaves a lot, obviously, grabs a lot of oil, so there's going to be some excess. So I want to pretty much bury it. In this stuff, and somehow, as old as this, as old as this uh, leather is, sheath is, I think it's going to soak every bit of it up. <laughs> Just grab it from there, throw it on the uh, every part of it, and so we'll give it, you know, ten days, a week, soak in. I'm gonna do a couple coats, try and get some on the inside if possible. See how it goes. All right, we get it inside the belt loop. Yeah, it seems to be getting inside of there. So call this extra up. No sense letting it go to waste. About 20 years old, this uh, knife and uh, belt, belt sheet here. So, just soak it. <laughs> we need a huge vat of this thing. I'm gonna try and get it down in the sheath. Seems to be going in a little ways anyway.
soaks it up pretty fast. There's a, it's been pretty dry. 20 years of sitting around in heat. Not going to be doing it. Tons of good. I'll dip it in here one more time. Let some of the excess drip off though so I don't see how it just runs like that. Plenty of it on there. The inside of the belt look, looks like it's still way dry. Room for more, probably soak up a ton. Try and push out some. Alright. And you know, so we'll let this thing sit for a while. If it needs another coat, we'll give it to it. And we'll do a before and after. A little time lapse. I think I got most of it. Some of these hairs do seem to shed a little off the applicator. Not too much, but some. What I'm concerned about is wipe them off when you're done. And so that's pretty much where we are. Looks like I covered pretty much everything very well. And including some areas that just really, really needed it. That inside is still kind of dry. Yeah, pretty amazing. Just squeeze out the oil off this applicator. That way. This thing lasts as long as it can, at least for as long as I live. Whoever gets it after I die, I don't care. Probably find out how I can do a follow up video after I'm dead. <laughs> anyway, here it is. Get the outside edges of it one more time. Dry it off faster than the rest. So we'll uh, let it dry out for a little while and come back and have a look at it. Here's the front. Here's the back. Maybe that'll help so it's steady and not shaking around. Alright, well, nice work box here, made use of that. See how it goes with the Wildcat when we're done. Alright, try and not get too much of this oil on my camera. <laughs> hey guys, uh, this is uh, after two or actually it's more like three or four weeks after since I applied the Open Oz leather oil. It's a, it's a lot more supple. Um, there's still, you can see where it was, you know, getting bad before, but it's very supple now. Um, even the inside, let's see. Even the inside is a lot better, but uh, so I'm going to hit it with, if it's supple enough, I'm going to use the uh, protectant. So here's what I use to start with. One coat of that, wait three or four weeks. Now I'm going to put uh, the Open Oz Heavy Duty Leather Protectant on it and uh, see how that goes. Wait a, wait a week. You are supposed to apply it by hand, so that's why I've got these uh, nitro gloves on. Uh, the heat helps... Uh, uh, get the uh, beeswax and propolis and whatever else they got in there to the right temperature to apply it. Although it's hot enough here to do it just sitting out here <laughs> on the lanai. So here's the leather. It looks a lot more supple, but it was, you know, 20 year old sheath to start with. So we'll see how it goes and apply the uh, open eyes now. The leather. All right, so here we go. Hopefully all this will be in the frame, I have no idea. Yeah, it's 
it's kind of like propolis beeswax. Take out the knife, don't need that in here. Probably gonna dry on in a waxy manner. You can see it's kind of melts from the heat. Not well, you can see it from this angle, but. So you can put two layers on or one layer. We'll just start off with one, see how that goes, might be enough. Make sure we get all the edges here. How does it smell? It smells like pretty neutral. There's no fragrance or anything. leathery fragrance. I don't know, because I just put it on leather. So yeah, Let's get, get enough in here to do the trick. Whatever the trick is, we'll find out in about a week. So this is like going to be like a time-lapse deal on this video. And you can kind of see where it's kind of come apart a little, starting to or at least separate, not come apart. I don't know if I have to have this re-stitched. I'm going to be some problems if I do because my leather worker is about to be behind, cut off by a lava flow. <laughs> that lava flow is like it just ran over the Buddhist cemetery just, in, just a couple days in front of Halloween, it looks like. The Pahoa uh, level lava flow there around. It's going, going to go right through town. From the Pu'u O'o vent, lava vent. And it's been streaming downhill for since June, I think. July 27th or June 27th. Anyway, it's getting near October, almost Halloween, and went right through a cemetery, cut off the trash station, the transfer where everybody transfer station where everybody dumps their trash. For those of you who live in a city, that's where you go. You dump it off at a transfer station if you're living in a rural area. Because there's no state uh, service that uh, does trash on the Big Island. It's all either private or it don't happen. Or you do it yourself. You haul. So I guess I'm just going to make sure I get this completely covered inside and out as far as I can. Even the strap here. This strap here I think especially needs it. Because when it breaks, I mean, I'm going to have to take the whole thing apart anyway. But uh, adding a lot of that suppleness I think from the oil helped on the inside of the straps a lot. Uh, if it gets hardened too much it'll just break. So get the strap is obviously you can't go right into it too much. Just as much as you can. It's it's the strap is on the other side in between the belt loop and the knife sheath slot. Gloves on both of that, both of my hands. Oh well. Too late now. It's too late, baby. It's way too late. All right. Cover the whole thing. I'll probably fast forward through this shit so you don't have to listen to me talk. <laughs> that would be boring. So yeah, the lava flow is going all the heck over the place. Doing the inside of the loop now. It's about to cut right through Pahoa. I think it's going to go... You should see there's like this one... It's going to go 
right through the supermarket they just built, you know, the strip mall. <laughs> and then it probably might hit the post office, I'm not sure. There's a lot of homes in the path of the lava that are for sale right now, and, and everything that's going to be cut off, I mean, you could buy an acre for 3000 bucks or 3500 in some spots <laughs> uh, that are about to be cut off. Uh, but, you know, how are you going to build there if you can't get any... Uh, anything through. Well, they'll probably figure out a way to do get it done, but uh, obviously if you have to work in the city, in Hilo, the highway is going to be cut off after Pahoa gets split in half. Never seen a town get split in half before, but you probably, it's already on CNN a lot there. People who can't pronounce anything in Hawaiian and people, some people who can and they're just gonna pump it up for all the town burning down press value they can get. Maybe that'll bump up their ratings. I mean, how much Ebola coverage can you possibly stand without just going nuts? You know? This politician does something stupid about Ebola. That politician does something stupid about Ebola. The other politician does something more stupid and blames the first two politicians. That's just politics oh hey uh, we got uh, a website that I got up for a kids book that I wrote based uh, mostly I write screenplays and this is kind of came out of the uh, book the screenplay the book was in the screenplays it's called the monster football league and but you can go check out the kids book uh, on monsterfootballleague.net just ducky made the website you know, we kind of teamed up. She did all the programming. Uh, you know, I threw in my, obviously, artwork from the book, basically, and, you know, some ideas. Um, and uh, so she did it. It looks like, she, I mean, it's not done yet. It's going to be done tomorrow, I think, in time for Halloween, and which is probably after this video will come out. But uh, check it out. It's basically uh, a monster... Uh, it's a word book for kids with pictures of, well, on the left pages there's like a for each letter of the alphabet there's a uh, a list of football words you know the letter A has all the football words that begin the letter A and then they, uh, on the on the right page of the book there's a uh, monster playing football and, and the children have to match the words to the picture of the monster which you know words match you know and as long as what they say makes sense they're right you know and there's a lot of words, and you know, depending on where your children are reading, um, you know, they can either match the pictures to the words, they can close their eyes and spell the words, or if they're good at drawing, they can take the words that aren't there and draw their own monsters. But it's a fun book, and it's something that parents or grandparents or aunts and uncles can do with young kids, because really, how many things can you actually do with them? You know? I mean, most of them, they're, they're too young to take shooting, they're too young to give a knife to, and they don't know anything about prepping or what well, most of the people that watch my channel are into and uh, they don't care what the latest gun is they you know but there's more to life than just guns and knives you know and leather work although all right well that looks pretty damn close and you know in a in a few days you know maybe in time for Halloween we'll see how it is but I did wait three I think it's almost four weeks the leather oil for it to just soak in and since it's warm outside this just seems to be going on real nice all right just stick that stuff inside as far as you can that's what she said all right get it in there <laughs> how do i go from kids book to that i don't know but somehow it's all related uh <laughs> great jokes. I should charge money for it. Oh wait, I, I monetize my stuff so I maybe in hundred years they'll owe me some money or something. Anyway, rim shot please. Uh, okay, yeah, it looks like this edge really needs it because it, yeah, it's still... I'm gonna just slather it on to this edge where it, where it really needs to be protected. 
soaks it up right there. And we'll get the inside of the belt loop one more time. Open Oz. Hooray. I should have got more of this stuff. I don't have too much leather, but... So what else have I got coming up? Oh, I got a new AK sling. I got a video that's going to be coming up. I got the Blue Force. Uh, they did a five, limited 500 run AK sling, so I'm going to do a video on that. I just got like the last one because they were all out on the website, and I called them up, and they had parts to make one more. So that video is going to be coming up. I got my blazer back, and I'm going to make it up to the range. Though I heard reports the DLNR and some marshals gave some guy a ticket and seized his guns. Cause, and, but he has a lawyer, and he's going to beat him in court because he was just sighting in his rifle, you know? He wasn't hunting. They're saying, you're not wearing... They went up and said, you're not wearing blaze orange. But he's not hunting. You only have to wear blaze orange in Hawaii if you're hunting. And he was just sighting his rifle. You don't sight in your rifle. If you don't practice shooting... And when you go hunting, you won't be able to hit the animal in the vitals, and then it'll suffer. And that's not good hunting policy. Well, this thing's a little slather. And then they arrested him for place to keep. And it's just like guys with guns and badges who don't know the laws. I mean, the sheriffs, the, the police don't know the hunting laws, but the deal on our guy should have, and he just wanted to charge somebody and be a big tough guy, it looks like. They've, they've done that kind of thing to people before, and they always wind up losing in court. It's just that somebody has to sue them. Uh, after they win their criminal case to make them uh, not do that again by extracting as much money as possible from them and the state. Alright, so that's it. I'm going to pick up my knife. I'm going to leave this here and see how, how it looks in a day or two or three or a week or two or three. This is Hawaii Volcano Squad. Out. How do I turn off the camera with all this shit on my hands? Oh well. <laughs> Little problems in life. Alright, so there's my wildcat. And now that we're back at the end, uh, you can see Back to the Future. <laughs> you can see where this, uh, <clears throat> where this uh, you know, leather sheath is now and the kind of shape it's in. Um, get some sunlight on it. It's just basically. Uh, the oil made it a lot sub, had a lot of su uh, sub, what's the word I'm looking for? It's subtle. It's, uh, it's just more, uh, there's more give and it's just more flexible. And then the, and you get, and a lot of the brown spots on the inside are now dark. They were light brown, now they're dark brown. Whatever that means. I don't know if you can see the inside that well. But, uh, this is a lot more, has a lot more give and take. There's a little waxy substances like on the inside and on, on here uh, from all the beeswax and propolis. I mean, the leather absorbed a lot of it, you know, and I think in like another week it'll absorb whatever still is on there. But um, it's just, it, it added, I think the, the wax and propolis added a lot of, uh, it wasn't just, you know, make it more us. Uh, uh, flexible um, and so it softened it. I think the oil softened it more and the beeswax and bees propolis and whatever else is in there um, did more than that. It, it was it made it a little it just added some more um, uh, strength to it somehow. It feels, the leather feels stronger and when I mean, you can look, look at the edge it was part, part of this was coming apart in brown and it's just in a lot better shape now. So I'd have to give Obanaz say it did its job, you know, and of course in another 20 years we'll see if this thing is here because this is was again a 20 year old um, sheath, and it still is. It's just got a blast of Obanaz oil. Waited three weeks and then Obanaz leather protectant. It's been three days with that, and uh, so I definitely have to give Obanaz a thumbs up on that and the whole I think this sheet is going to last a whole lot longer now um, alright so I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, check out my ebook if you got kids, nephews or nieces I mean with the guns or leather but you know
monsterfootballleague.net. Uh, teach your children well, and reading is part of that. All right, so have fun. Aloha from Hawaii, and happy Halloween.